Welcome to my channel Medicine Guide. Chlorthalidone versus HCTZ. Comparison of the effectiveness and safety of chlorthalidone and hydrochlorothiazide in patients with hypertension. According to a meta-analysis, hypertension is a syndrome that involves multiple neuroendocrine, hemodynamic, and metabolic abnormalities. The prevalence of hypertension has been rising worldwide. Hypertension is associated with an increased risk of complications and mortality from cardiovascular illnesses. For over 40 years, thiazide diuretics have been the primary medication for the management of hypertension in most patients. In this video we will discuss the comparison between the efficacy of chlorthalidone and hydrochlorothiazide. So let's start our discussion. But before that, please subscribe to my channel Medicine Guide. Two of these medications are chlorthalidone, which is considered a thiazide-like agent, and hydrochlorothiazide, which is considered a thiazide-type agent. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved both drugs more than 50 years ago. Recent observational studies have shown that the two drugs decreased the risk of cardiovascular events at a similar rate. However, the risk of adverse events, including hypokalemia, is highest in patients receiving chlorthalidone. Thiazide-type diuretics, such as hydrochlorothiazide at a daily dose of 12.5 to 25 mg, have traditionally been the first choice for treating most patients with high blood pressure, BP. However, in recent times, chlorthalidone has become popular as a replacement for hydrochlorothiazide due to its superior clinical outcomes and effectiveness in lowering BP. Medicare spending revealed that in 2020, around 1.5 million individuals were prescribed chlorthalidone, whereas 11.5 million were prescribed hydrochlorothiazide, despite guidelines recommending chlorthalidone as the preferred option. The reason for this difference between recommended and actual use may be linked to the perception that chlorthalidone carries a higher risk of adverse effects such as electrolyte imbalances, even though there is no clear evidence to suggest differences in cardiovascular outcomes. Even though chlorthalidone and hydrochlorothiazide are structurally similar compounds, they are quite different pharmacokinetically. Hydrochlorothiazide is different from chlorthalidone in that the latter has a long half-life and a large distribution volume because of its extensive partitioning into red blood cells. A half dose of chlorthalidone is more effective in reducing systolic blood pressure, SBP, compared to hydrochlorothiazide, primarily due to its BP-lowering efficacy throughout the nighttime hours. Thus, it is hypothesized that the differences in the persistence of BP-lowering effectiveness would play an important role in differences in arterial stiffness and central BPs. Despite being similar in structure and mechanism of action, some studies suggest that chlorthalidone may be more effective in reducing BP and preventing cardiovascular events than hydrochlorothiazide. However, the evidence is conflicting, and the safety profiles of the two drugs have not been fully explored. Therefore, a comprehensive meta-analysis comparing the effectiveness and safety of chlorthalidone and hydrochlorothiazide in patients with hypertension is warranted. The aim of the present meta-analysis was to compare the effectiveness and safety of chlorthalidone and hydrochlorothiazide in patients with hypertension. Discussion. The aim of our meta-analysis was to compare the efficacy, effectiveness, and safety of chlorthalidone and hydrochlorothiazide as monotherapy or in combination with other antihypertensive treatments in individuals with hypertension. The meta-analysis reported superiority of chlorthalidone in terms of control of DBP and SBP compared to hydrochlorothiazide. However, no significant differences were reported between the two groups in regard to the risk of myocardial infarction, stroke, all-cause mortality, and hospitalization due to heart failure. In terms of hypokalemia, the risk was reported to be higher with chlorthalidone compared to hydrochlorothiazide. All over the world, hydrochlorothiazide is used more often than chlorthalidone. However, in recent years, it has been actively debated whether chlorthalidone and hydrochlorothiazide need to be considered interchangeable agents. Evidence indicates that chlorthalidone may be a more favorable option than hydrochlorothiazide. 
On the other hand, a study conducted by Rausch et al. reported that chlorthaladone is likely to be more effective compared to hydrochlorothiazide. In this meta-analysis is different from these two analyses as we included recently conducted trials and studies with direct comparison between hydrochlorothiazide and chlorthaladone. Chlorthaladone has effective BP control compared to hydrochlorothiazide due to its unique pharmacokinetic profile, which allows it to stay active for a longer period, possibly due to its wider distribution in the body, including the red blood cells. This sustained effect is particularly effective during the night and early morning and is thought to be responsible for chlorthaladone's known advantages in reducing cardiovascular disease and death rates. The use of thiazides can lower the chances of cardiovascular problems, but there is a debate on which type of thiazide to use. Earlier research has indicated that chlorthaladone is more effective than hydrochlorothiazide in preventing cardiovascular problems. It seems that chlorthaladone has a longer-lasting impact, leads to better control of BP throughout the day, and has other beneficial effects. However, multiple observational studies suggest different effects on cardiovascular outcomes, ranging from no impact to an increased risk of cardiovascular issues with chlorthaladone compared to hydrochlorothiazide. The present meta-analysis reported a higher risk of hypokalemia in patients receiving chlorthaladone compared to hydrochlorothiazide. All three studies that assessed this outcome reported a higher risk of hypokalemia with chlorthaladone. However, only one study was an RCT. A study conducted by Lund and Ernst did not specifically report a significant difference in the incidence of hypokalemia or hyponatremia between hydrochlorothiazide and chlorthaladone, but they reported that patients who received chlorthaladone were more likely to discontinue treatment compared to patients who received hydrochlorothiazide. There are several reasons why patients treated with chlorthaladone may discontinue treatment but one of the possible reasons is that it can cause electrolyte imbalances. Chlorthaladone is a stronger and longer-lasting antihypertensive medication than hydrochlorothiazide, which is the most commonly prescribed medication, but it can also lower serum potassium levels more significantly. Our analysis showed that chlorthaladone was superior to hydrochlorothiazide in controlling both SBP and DBP, with no significant heterogeneity reported. However, there was no significant difference between the two groups in terms of the risk of myocardial infarction, stroke, all-cause mortality, and hospitalization due to heart failure. The risk of hypokalemia was reported to be higher with chlorthaladone. Further studies are needed to confirm these findings and to investigate the long-term effects of chlorthaladone and hydrochlorothiazide in patients with hypertension. When it comes to actual medical practice, Physicians should prescribe medications that aid patients in achieving their BP targets, taking into account the possibility of electrolyte imbalance as a potential risk factor. It is crucial for healthcare providers to balance the benefits and risks of medication and its adverse events before prescribing it to ensure that patients receive the best possible treatment with minimal negative outcomes. That's enough for this video. If you want to watch more videos like this, please keep watching my channel. Disclaimer channel's intention is to make sure that its consumers get information that is accurate, reviewed by an expert and error-free. However, the information mentioned here should not be used as a replacement for the advice of a qualified physician. The information given here is for informational purposes only, which may not cover all possible precautions, side effects, contraindications or drug interactions. Consult your doctor and discuss your queries related to any medicine or disease. Thank you for watching the video. Please do not subscribe to like, share, and subscribe to my channel Medicine Guide.